So a dependent system is something like this, where these, uh, these different sets, these different equations, are going to all meet. Uh, they're going to meet all at the same line, meaning you're going to have a, uh, an a or you're going to have an infinite number of solutions. And depending on what x is, uh, the y and the z will follow from that. But there will be an infinite number of points. Okay. Right? And what you're going to see on something like this is your uh, answers will have some at symbol in them. If you see an at symbol in your equation, that means that you have a, a dependent system. Right? And so here's what you're going to have to do, at least for the problems that we're doing uh, for this class. It might be different as far as how you approach the additional pieces of a dependent system next year. But what we're going to do is if we go through and we enter our equation, so in the custom tab, the F3 solve system, or system solver, again, I'm going to go ahead and change this to uh, the Z. And I'm going to add um, another place for a system or from another equation. And so then I'm going to type in my three equations. So x plus y plus z equals negative 17. Oops. All right, so out of the alpha lock, when you type in your equation, x plus y plus z is equal to negative 17. Your next equation, 3x plus 3y plus 3z equals negative 51. And then the final equation, negative x plus 2z equals negative 10. And when you hit enter, what you see is this at symbol. Again, the number that follows the at symbol will change. Uh, each time you do it, it'll go up by one. So if I did this another, another time, then my next one would probably be at six and then at seven. At some point, it'll reset, uh, or you can reset it. Uh, but once you see this at symbol, what you know is you're dealing with a dependent system. And so, uh, and there will be a question where it asks you to enter your answer. When you enter your answer for this system, you're going to start with the variable x. Right. Now, to figure out what your y and your z are going to be, they are both going to be written in terms of x. And this you'll have to do by hand or by, you can use your calculator to manipulate it, but you are going to have to uh, make some manipulations by hand. So the next thing you, you want to do is you want to look to solve for y in terms of z and solve for z sorry, that's me, in terms of x, and solve for z in terms of x. Okay, so which of these, based on the equations that you see here, which of those is going to be easier to find? Z in terms of x or y in terms of x? Notice this equation only has two variables, right? So if you can find one of the, or one of the equations with just two variables, you're going to solve this for z. So if I solve this equation for z, I add x to both sides and then divide by 2. So what that gives me is z is equal to 1 half x minus 5. Okay, and so that's going to be my answer here. z is 1 half x minus 5. So I can find that first found z in terms of x. Okay, once I have that, I'm then going to try to find y in terms of x. And so the easiest equation up here to use for that is going to be this first equation. I get x plus y plus. Now, instead of using z, I need to change everything to just x's and y's. So I'm going to use this right here. Substitute in for z. So 1 half x minus 5. Set that equal to negative 17. And now if I solve this resulting equation for y, I can plug the expression in here. So uh, what I get is if I uh, combine my x's, 1x plus 1 half x gives me 3 half x. I'm then going to subtract that, move it over to the other side, so 3 half x. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So here I get minus 12. 
there is my y value, so negative 3 halves x minus 12. And so this would be my answer for this dependent system.